In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our life-giving Lord, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, today's gospel shows to us the truth-seeking example of Nicodemus as he approaches the Lord Jesus under the cover of night, so that we might seek the truth which our Lord gives to us, let us begin this Mass by first calling to mind our sins and then asking the Lord for his divine mercy. Lord, for the times that we have not sought you and the truth of your life-saving message, Lord, have mercy. Christ, for the times that we have failed to seek you and your gift of eternal life, Christ have mercy. And Lord, for the times that we have not lived as members of your church family, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and may he bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have been renewed by Paschal remedies, transcending the likeness of our earthly parentage, may be transformed in the image of our heavenly Maker, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples entertain folly? The kings of the earth took their stand and the princes gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threat and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. As they pray, the place where they were gathered shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's responsorial song response is, Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Why do the nations rage and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. He who is throned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them. Then in anger he speaks to them. He terrifies them in his wrath. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dig. 
Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Our gospel verse, Alleluia, Alleluia. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. And may the Lord be with you. Our gospel reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man, once grown, be born again? Since he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be afraid and are amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it will, and you can hear the sound it makes but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, in yesterday's Gospel, we referred to the doubting apostle of St. Thomas. And I mentioned that rather than giving him the nickname of Doubting Thomas, We'd be much more accurate if we gave him the nickname of Repentant Thomas. I would say the same thing about Nicodemus in today's gospel. Down through the centuries, we looked at Nicodemus as someone who was very hesitant, uh, very uh, questioning of Jesus' teachings. But let's look at all three instances that we see of Nicodemus in the gospel, specifically the gospel of St. John. Now, notice in today's gospel passage, Nicodemus approaches Jesus under the cover of night because he's afraid to make it publicly known that he is a follower of Jesus. But then after this example, look a bit later in Jesus' public ministry. The Sanhedrin, namely the 71 leading Jewish leaders, were discussing how to get rid of this guy, Jesus. Nicodemus was the one who stood up in their midst and said, but wait a minute, it is not lawful for us as Jewish people to condemn an accused person without a fair trial. And in doing so, what Nicodemus did was buy more time for Jesus to continue his public ministry. Then also remember, after Jesus' death, before he is buried, it's Nicodemus who shows up with the aloes and the different ingredients that would be used to embalm Jesus' body prior to burial. Jesus, uh, Nicodemus made it very obvious that by that point in time, he was indeed a follower of Jesus, so much so that he was willing to step forward at a time when Jesus' followers felt very threatened by the Jews and by the Romans. Notice how Nicodemus was literally willing to endanger his life, not just his position in the Sanhedrin as one of the Jewish leaders, not just his financial welfare, but his life itself in order to follow the Lord Jesus. Now, let's also look at our own lives, particularly when it comes to living our faith truly. Notice, if we are anti-abortion, then there's a good chance somebody is going to accuse us of being anti-women's right. If we are anti-capital punishment, then there's a good chance that somebody's going to call us a P 
pinko communism. If we're against pornography or if we're against sex outside of marriage, there's a good chance that somebody's going to call us a prude. We can go right down the line when it comes to living our faith. We can figure if we're going to live our faith truly and fully, somebody's going to make fun of us, somebody's going to mock us. Certainly, that did not interfere with Nicodemus deepening the gift of his faith, nor should public ridicule or mockery uh, or even discrimination stop us from living truly and fully the gift of our faith, so that we might indeed draw closer and closer to the Lord and to his gift of the heavenly kingdom, let us now present to him our prayers and our petition, that we might seek the Lord and his gift of eternal life and all that we say and all that we do, we pray to the Lord, that even in the midst of ridicule and mockery, we might live our faith truly and fully, we pray to the Lord. That the manner in which we live our lives might show to the world the truth and the beauty of Jesus' example and teaching, we pray to the Lord. For all of the intentions that were offered at yesterday's Sunday Mass, also for today's intentions of Jack Murphy, Garrett Hughes, Billy Hughes, Diane Johnson, Patrick Paul Giroir, the special intention of Frankie Siberson, Curtis Babin, Andre Dugas, for our own individual intentions, as well as our personal prayers of thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, we thank you for the beauty and the truth of our faith. Grant our prayers and our petitions so that inspired and led by your Holy Spirit, we might ever be your people, following the teachings and seeking the eternal life that you give us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to give her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their soul, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, the evangelists, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is my blood, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. If we, like Nicodemus, seek the eternal life of the Lord Jesus, then let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, 
the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and mortals, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who blesses us with the gift of his own eternal life. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I would now like to invoke, invite those of you at home who are unable to receive the Holy Eucharist sacramentally to please join me in praying the prayer of spiritual communion. Most Holy Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. May I never be parted from you. Amen. And let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended.